All right, ready to dive deep into this whole success thing. Always up for a challenge, especially with a topic as universally fascinating as this one. Right, and you sent in some seriously interesting material for this deep dive. We're talking an English podcast lesson plan focused on success. Oh, I like where this is going. Using language learning as a lens to understand success, that's pretty unique. Exactly. And it really gets going when they hit the business strategy section. It's like they polled a bunch of successful companies, you know, trying to crack the code. Always good to learn from those who've been there, done that. What kind of insights are we talking about? One that kind of threw me, they ranked a good marketing plan as more important than having a great product when it comes to profitability, at least for smaller companies. Interesting. Especially in today's market. It definitely challenges the idea of build it and they will come. Totally. Makes you wonder if it's more about getting the word out there than having the perfect product, especially when you're starting out. Absolutely. It highlights the importance of visibility and how you connect with your target audience, even with a fantastic product, if nobody knows about it. Exactly. It's like that saying, you got to get yourself out there. Huh. But it's not all about marketing, right? This lesson also digs into the essential qualities for success in different professions. It's fascinating to see how success can manifest in such diverse ways, depending on the field. Totally. Like, it makes sense that being muscular is a good look for a personal trainer. Right. Physical strength and stamina are kind of essential for that line of work. Exactly. <laughs> but then you get to persuasive as a key trait for a politician, and suddenly things get a lot more, I don't know. Nuanced. Totally. Like, is being persuasive always a good thing? Where's the line between convincing people and, well, maybe being a little too slick? It's a great question, and it really speaks to the importance of critical thinking, especially when it comes to analyzing these success factors, what works in one context. Might totally backfire in another, right? Exactly. And this source does a nice job of encouraging that kind of deeper analysis, prompting you to think about the potential downsides and unintended consequences. Like when does persuasive cross the line into manipulative and how much of that is about the politician themselves versus like the public's perception? It gets complicated. Definitely. And that's what makes this exploration of success so interesting. There's rarely a one-size-fits-all answer. All right, so we've talked about what it takes to be successful. But this lesson plan takes a really interesting turn when it digs into company names. It's like, how does language itself shape what we think of as successful? It's amazing how powerful a name can be. It's branding, it's emotion, it's everything. Right. And some of these stories about how companies got their names are wild. Like, Hagen does. That super premium ice cream. Totally made up. Wait, really? Yeah. They wanted a name that sounded like Scandinavian, sophisticated, you know, to, to make people think of luxury. So playing into those associations we have with certain languages and culture. Exactly. It's brilliant marketing when you think about it. Yeah. But then there's Pepsi. Get this. It was named after indigestion. No way. You're kidding? Seriously. Pepsi comes from dyspepsia. Can you imagine trying to launch a drink with that name today? It definitely wouldn't scream refreshing and invigorating. That takes some serious guts to go with a name like that. No kidding. It makes you wonder about all the brands we consider successful and how much their names play into that. Right. What's in a name anyway? Apparently, a lot. What about you, listening? Any brand names come to mind that you find particularly effective? Or maybe names that just completely miss the mark? It's fascinating to consider how these names resonate across different languages and cultures, too. A name that screams success in one place might fall flat in another. Totally. It's like this whole lesson. It's not just about learning English. It's about understanding how language shapes our view of the world, including what it means to be successful. You know, it's pretty amazing when you think about it. Right. We started with an English lesson plan and somehow ended up talking about the psychology of branding. It just shows how intertwined language and success really are. It's not just about what we achieve, but how we talk about it, how we perceive it. It makes you wonder, beyond all the business strategies and catchy slogans, what does success really mean for you, the listener? What are you striving for? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? This lesson plan gave us some great tools, but ultimately, your definition of success is uniquely yours. So how do we figure that out? How do we define success on our own terms? It's about tuning in to what truly resonates with you, what makes you feel alive and fulfilled. It's about aligning your actions with your values, regardless of external expectations. That makes a lot of sense. It's less about chasing some predefined image of success and more about finding that sense of personal fulfillment. 
Exactly. It's about the journey, not just the destination. It's about finding joy in the process, pursuing your passion, making a meaningful contribution, however you define that. I love that idea. Mm -hmm. So as you continue to explore this whole success thing, here's a thought to ponder. What truly makes you feel accomplished, even if it's something no one else sees or celebrates? What does success look like when you strip away all the external validation? What brings you a sense of quiet satisfaction and pride? That's something worth reflecting on. Absolutely. And on that note, we'll wrap up this deep dive into success. Thanks for joining us. It's always a pleasure to explore these big ideas with you.